Welcome to Every Album Ever with Mike and Alex. My name is Michael Mansoor. I'm joined, as always, by my lovely co-host, Alexander Voltz. Say hello. Hello. I don't have any witty song lyrics today. I just feel like crud. I'm, I think you feel like crud, too. I do. All right, let's, let's, let's just wrap this up. We're done here? I'm d- okay. <clears throat> that was a good run? No, I'm not going to go. That was a good run. Now I'm going to go. I'm actually... Ex- hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already fucking, <laughs> see that threw me off completely. Uh, this is Every Album Ever, the podcast where we listen to every single album in the world, one artist at a time. That's a new discography, uh, more or less, per episode. And today, we are talking about the wipers. Goddamn right. I guess through this wipers, not the. Yeah, it's, I mean, the is it's such a an important word in English <laughs> language that you just throw it like swans. It's not the swans. It's just like swans. swans. Uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Uh, you were plugging. telling the what? good people about our podcast. Oh, what we do. That's right. Uh, if you uh, have any suggestions for artists you want us to talk about, or you want to, you hate us, you want to say you hate us or you love us. You want to say you love us. Send everything you want to every album, every at gmail.com. Or if you want to react in real time as you're listening, this leave and, essays worth of comments while you're listening on the YouTube channel, please do that as well. That's, of course, we're not referencing anything specific that no. might have happened within the past couple of weeks. No. Of course not. Of course not. We would never do that. Uh, if And also, just share, like, subscribe. It all helps. Uh, we really appreciate any, everybody who's who's been supportive and, and has told their buddies about us because we're morons and we have nothing else going on in our lives and it's sad and we're tired and we're both sick and we've both been sick for about two weeks and life is real hard and it's <laughs> and uh i'm gonna get on a plane to the east coast tomorrow so yay You're cramming this uh cramming this old podcast in there b- before you for the uh this like the warcraft characters for the horde for the for the cast i don't know what that means i'm gonna agree because you seem passionate about it I only my my knowledge of uh, Warcraft is only through Hearthstone, and you'll play a card, and they'll go for the Lord. I guess there's. <laughs> it sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you're a Warcraft nerd and you know what for the Horde means, good for you, because I barely do. All right, now I know, and now we're all closer because of it or something. <laughs> uh, after this episode, please be sure to check out our playlist, our Spotify playlist on on Wipers. I was almost the Wipers, like a fucking noob. Uh, there's uh, links at everyalbumever.com, as well as in the description of wherever you're watching or listening to this. There should be uh, a link everywhere, pretty much. Also in our bios and stuff <clears throat> on Instagram. Shameless, uh, shameless self None, none. Like I said, this is all we got. <laughs> Please help us. Uh, there's also a playlist associated with every episode that we've done uh, ever. So go back in the archives, check out all the things that we like, because uh, we pick all the songs out ourselves, all our favorites and all that jazz. And what we like is more important than what you like. Yeah. Specifically, whoever you are listening. To exactly. <laughs> yeah. Our goal is to piss off every person that may have stumbled. No. Uh, Although I do do firmly believe, like I've said many times in the past, our opinions are just as worthless as everyone else's. Your opinion is worthless as well, viewer or and or listener. Our opinion uh, is equally worthless, but we just we just have microphones. We have microphones, and uh, we hope uh, people like it enough to listen to it. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> we have no credentials otherwise. Uh, so, like we said, we're talking about wipers. Uh, I have been so before we started doing this old podcast. I I knew I had the the idea for you know let's listen to every album by whatever artist. I had two artists in mind when starting this. Like I know I don't know. Well, obviously I'll come up with more along the way. But out of the gate, these are the two I fucking want to do. ELO, which was episode one, and the second one was Wipers, which is episode twenty two. <laughs> we got around to it eventually. <clears throat> I mean, one of my ideas was. Husker do and or the replacements and we still haven't gotten around to that. They're, they're so. coming up though. They're coming up. <laughs> we still haven't gotten around. But uh, this is one that I've been very excited to get to. Uh, I, I used to listen to the, the old wipers back in my youth and uh, I haven't heard. Well, I've only I'd only heard a few albums. So I wanted to do a deep dive. They're super underappreciated. Uh, nobody talks about them too much. A little bit, but not at all. Really? Yeah, like, I don't really have any. uh <laughs> any historical talk context for for y'all today so it's really mostly opinions today you don't got no research there is 
very scant information. That's, that is a bummer because I, I, this is one of the bands in my early teens that I, I became infatuated with. And then I started making all my friends listen to them. So we, have, there, yes. I have friends that don't listen to any kind of alt quote unquote music that are huge wipers fans nice. because I forced it upon. Them. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited to do this. <clears throat> uh, I had a lot of opinions going in. Many of them have changed with age. Cause I, I had to happen. Yeah. Uh, it's actually happened surprisingly little on this podcast with bands that I've been familiar with. This is the one where I went in pretty much with an established thought and it came out like, Oh, that's not at all what I feel anymore. And, uh, overall, I'm glad I did this. And also I'm pretty bummed out <laughs> because good God, we're going to get into it, but good fucking God. So to kick it off, they have nine albums, nine full full length albums, but we are talking about the alien boy EP. So it'll be nine albums in one EP that we'll be talking about. First album was released in 1980. The last one in 1999. Uh, and before we, we go into it, uh, Extra credit. I did listen. I gave a once over to their first EP. Oh, damn. I don't remember what it's called. I already forgot. Came out in 1979. You could tell it's very early. It's cool. It's good. It's six minutes long, literally. Um, better off dead. Better off dead. It's cool. Uh, uh, if you like early wipers, which we'll talk about in like 10 seconds, uh, you'll definitely like this. So let's steer. Well, you know what? Foundation. The, whatever you do know foundation what i do know is uh it's greg sage mm -hmm. who's from portland oregon and his family was <clears throat> lucky enough to have a um a record pressing machine so he would like he's been messing around with like recording all his life because he's lucky enough to have that machine mm. had all these like grandiose ideas of like well <clears throat> sorry people um, like I'm going to record like 12 albums and then start touring. Oh, like, something stupid always, like that. Yeah, always. Yeah. With these ideas, but then, uh, I mean, they're an underrated band. So, uh, they've had, you know, ups and downs, lots of, uh, self self published stuff, but I don't think they've ever been on like a, a major, major label what about you what's your personal backstory with them uh proper like introduction like i knew it was wipers was uh in my 20s went to go watch the melvins and they covered youth of america and you also have a, a recorded cover of youth of america on electro retard yeah yeah it was the first melvin's album i ever bought and it was the first time i heard that song which oh, is random first yeah. album i know i know i don't um, know how but <laughs> so it was the first I, i've heard the melvin's but it was the first one i personally bought yeah so that was like and then i was like what is this song it so it's so good and then uh i've also wanted to do like a deep dive into them because this Youth of America is pretty much the only album I've listened mm -hmm. to before mm -hmm. this. So, uh, yeah. Let's kick it off then with the 1980s Is This Real? <laughs> I just realized that I have, I'm gonna have to stop myself from doing impressions to this band too. <laughs> Good? God damn. Let's do, let's do one real painful one. <laughs> no, 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 no. Man, it's a great song. It's real good. I can't wait to do Doug Kennedy's and hear your uh, oh, your man. cello. You goddamn right. <laughs> yeah, goddamn right. Okay, okay, then let's jump into it. Alrighty. So I feel like most people, if you were like really into Nirvana, Nirvana's covered that song. As well as D7, which is also on this album. As well as Stolen Potential Suicide for Breed. Uh, rhythmically, I maybe, but I, I, it's I, the same. It's the same. I really think so. Okay, so I did this with the Zeppelin one. Might as well do it. So I'm okay. gonna play some potential suicide. Okay. 
This is a good song too. It's an awesome yeah. song. Okay, so that's low swipers. Okay. Here's Nirvana. So, okay, I get it. I definitely get it. All right. All right. Uh, I get I get the comparison, and I would totally disagree with you if they didn't play it in the same fucking key. If they, <laughs> man, if they just changed the fucking key, I would have defended Nirvana. Really? Fuck, man. First, they, change, they steal Come As You Are from, from fucking Killing Joke. See, uh, at least with Killing Joke, like Dave Grohl repaid them by playing drums on one of their albums for free. I mean, that's one way to repay them. And then I I don't know if they did anything for wipers. But. I, I do feel like the ripoff was more probably heavily influenced more so than, um, than like, you know, I'm going to take this riff because it's a good riff. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of songwriting is like, Oh, I hear this and I'll, I'll, I'll tinker with it. I'll change this note and make it this note. Uh, I don't do that because I'm better than it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't do that because it doesn't, it, it just doesn't, I don't, it doesn't work for me. Um, I, I don't, I, if I, if I, if I hear something that sounds too much like this is something else, I'll get really insecure about it and I'll get like sure. frustrated. <clears throat> that is eerily similar, different notes, but like, obviously he's influenced by them. Obviously. I mean, yeah. Like, like, his, like he wrote that this album and some other ones were like in his top 50 albums. That makes sense. Time. Um, like Nirvana's cover of return of the rat, the song you were just hearing that, uh, that or the, the opening song, not the song you were just hearing. Uh, their cover of that is way more famous than this version. The, yeah. same, the same with D7, which D7 is fucking great too. Lots of good songs on here. This was uh, this is my favorite growing up. This was <coughs> this was my favorite growing up. This is my favorite going in. This is no longer my favorite. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, I have a lot of fondness. I think it's a great album. The bubblegummy bullshit songs in the middle. Didn't, I used to like them, and they didn't used to bother me. Now they bother me. Oh, the title track? Oh. The title track? Sometimes I get the baby. It's a food for want to that. Sorry. D Dave Grohl heard that and said, I'm just going to make a whole band that sounds like the title track. It's all, it's so Foo Fighters-like. And plus it has that like fucking sublime part in the middle. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who else were we listening to? Where I was like, that, that was Minutemen. Minutemen, unintentional, sublime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that yeah, the title track. I used to really like it. Now it it bothers me. I think it's silly and a little too much. But most of my favorite Wiper songs are on this album. Yeah, uh, like Mystery. Uh, Wait a minute, I fucking love Wait a minute so much. Uh, Winter Talk for Love, Goddamn Tragedy, like. There's so many there's so many good songs in this album i really and then really enjoyed alien boy that's such a good good song alien boy is fantastic there uh we'll be talking we said earlier that we're going to be doing the alien boy ep this is the it, basically the song alien boy they they the, the whole ep of alien boy i believe were outtakes from this album and alien boy the song is the only one that made it onto the album mm -hmm. but we'll be talking about the the full ep after this one but <clears throat> Good shit. And I, I listened to it like a few times because it's been a while. It's been a few years. And I was dead set like, no, this one is my favorite. I remember mm -hmm. it being my favorite. And then at, at the end of it, I decided yeah, I had to be honest with myself. It's no longer my favorite. Yeah. These first few albums for me, this effortless listening, this fun, fantastic. Yeah. Wonderful. They're wonderful. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, there was some uh, debating going on. But this, oh, hell yeah. Yeah. This gets no uh no title for me either, obviously. Mm. Still a really good uh, super good. I highly recommend and honestly great debut. Great debut. Honestly, the best produced album I think they've ever ever done. Right. And to think that they the production gets worse with each album <laughs> is weird and funny. And kind of, it seems like it doesn't make sense, but it actually kind of does when you take into account how self-produced everything is. Mm -hmm. And the more the the older that Greg gets, and the the basically 
the amount of no recognition that the band is getting along the way, obviously, like why should why should he care? <laughs> yeah. well, not not so much maybe his morale, but like finances. Like you're not going to be producing better albums if you're get, if you're getting less recognition as you go along. Sure, which is a uh, part the pun tragedy. Uh, purely, but, purely a uh, bit doing it for the love of the craft. Absolutely, I, I hear that. God damn. <laughs> Uh, but still, highly recommend it. Please give it a shot. Give it a shot. Uh, where are we at next? I wonder where we're at next, Alex. We're still in 1980. We're going to hit him with that Alien Boy EP. Hell yeah. So yeah, this was on the previous album, and yeah, I loved it instantly. Yeah, great. It has a, it's very similar to Potential Suicide, or Breed. It has that that slow build up with the bass and drums, or bass and uh, toms. But this is a great song. Yeah, that's oh, so good. Yeah. It, it feels paranoid. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. Not the Black Sabbath song. No. Just like the, the, the feeling, vibe, of, yeah, yeah, the feeling of paranoia. Okay. All right. I really wanted to get to the part where he goes, uh, because it's real cool. But that's a good part. Also, I, f- I forget to mes- mention in the previous album, Greg's fucking voice is so good. It's so cool. It's a, it's a, his whale especially. It's, it's like powerful and yet like heartbreaking at the same time. It's a strange, very moving whale. Well, like best con- whale in punk. Yeah, considering like what was going on with punk, I don't know. It's weird. His voice isn't unique, like. Like, uh, like you recognize it right off the bat, but I don't really think a lot of punk singers were singing like that. No. Also, if they were, it was more snarly. It was probably a little bit weaker. Uh, his, his highs and his yells, I think they're super distinct. Uh, and like the most characteristic thing of Greg's voice, I think is he does a lot of spoken word in the middle of songs like this. Yeah. And then he gets a little bit louder, a little bit louder, a little bit louder. Oh! And that's pretty much the trajectory of his style. I love it. I think it's great. I think that's why I bought up uh, Dead Kennedys. I don't know when their debut was, but it, uh, a eighty, I think it's uh, it's kind of a similar approach. But if a clown was <laughs> <laughs> listen to the wifers, and I say that with love, yeah, I do. Jello's I, voice is this wacky. I do love Jello and in, in his stupid fucking voice, but he is definitely wacky. Yeah, now, he's got a cool voice like too. I like listen it. to the wipers and Wayne. Ah! Ah! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, do, I think. Do you think Greg's voice can appeal to damn near everyone? I think it's, it's awesome. And <clears throat> this EP, almost my favorite. Oh, what? because it's it's there's four songs. It's short as fuck, uh, and every song is good. However, on the streaming version. There are some differences that are nonsensical, and I can't find an explanation. One is the cover, which if you're watching the video, you'll see behind us. That's not the original cover. The original cover is just letters that say Alien Boy and kind of like wacky old, old timey horror movie style letters. Mm-hmm. And uh, also on streaming, it says it was released in 1982. It was not. It was 1980. And then the third thing, uh, the uh, Voices in the Rain is supposed to be the last track, and it's the third track. Okay. And Voices in the Rain is fucking great and it's way better as a final track yeah put on a little bit of voices in the rain that's a great great goddamn song will do it's like probably spy. like the fastest yeah, waiver song for sure it's like a spy theme again going back to like that paranoia yeah yeah this whole ep feels like that to me All right, so he does some like spoken word stuff, and then he comes in loud, and you know he does his thing. Uh, 
what is it? Uh, Image of Man. I I think that's my favorite song. That's not Alien Boy. Really on here? Yeah. On here? It's that guitar line is so melancholic. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, every song is a winner. It's just like the first album, but a lot darker. <clears throat> More yeah. paranoid, as you said. Yeah, good, tr- good little transition EP between the debut album and Youth of America, I think. Yeah, and um, on Greg, re- we released the first three albums as like a box set. Yeah. And things were different. Those are like the, I don't know if those are the versions that are streaming, but those Mostly. are supposed to be like the superior sounding. Uh, I think so. I think they are also, there's slight differences. Like um, <coughs> I believe the song Alien Boy was removed from the first album and then the entire Alien Boy EP was tacked on at the end. Okay. So that's how I was introduced to it. Um, It's a lot better that way. Like if that was, if they were all released as one album, man, that would probably be my favorite. Probably. Um, it's real good. It's real short. Underrated as fuck. I mean, the whole band's underrated, but this EP, I think, uh, really doesn't get any love. Mm-hmm. Please listen to it. Yeah, you like uh, you like the short EP. Yeah, I love it. I love yeah. it. I mean, it's a lot of it's probably have to do with my uh, my long history with hardcore punk. Everything was an EP, but it, it's they're succinct. They don't give you time to get bored, and if you do get bored, it means they suck. It's very <laughs> there's no there's no wiggle room with with EPs. So the next one we are at. 1981, following year. And you'll see the image right behind us because Alex owns it. This is Youth of America. I, lo- I love this, this song. Oh, it's incredible. It's- I don't even want to wail over it, which I want to, but I won't because it's so good. It's like... It's a long intro too, but it's everyone. Please sit tight. It's real good. Please. I really like the term like post metal or post punk. Yeah, but I like post punk because post punk is so much more broad. It has like a lot of things that I already like. Killing joke. I couldn't stress there's anything else. Yeah, this almost almost that vibe. Dip for sure. And this is way before. This was '81. This is hardcore era. This is yeah, right in the thick of it. Yeah, we're still with the punk era. Yeah, we're not. Yeah. We're not post. Not even close. Every time I turn around, he's doing a spoken word thing. Yeah. Yeah. Take a piece of our lives to think we can. Take away the joy. Take all of that. And then when the song starts, it's completely different. Yeah. And also way better. So that's why we're making you listen to the entire intro, people. I don't know. I would. It's so good. It's not fair, Alex. Life is not fair. That's every Wipers album about how unfair <laughs> life is. This song is literally called No Fair. Here we go. His Jesus, man. If, if, if anybody listening isn't turned by this riff, my God. I don't this know, is as good as it gets. I don't know if this is hyperbole, but yeah, his guitar playing doesn't get any any better than this album. Really? You, you don't think his guitar playing gets any better than this album? I think it gets interesting and he does some different things, but this in terms of this pure, pure riffage and uh, right. inventiveness. Style. Awesome shit. Yeah, this uh, tends across the board for me on this album. So this is uh, obviously your your best. Well, it's my personal favorite. It's your personal favorite. Yeah. So this is my best. This was not my best growing up. Okay. This is newfound. I had to buckle down and think about what I feel an album is, what I love about it, because I do love it. Mm-hmm. And this one I always thought was good, but not their best. And now I change my tune. This is their, I believe this is their best. Yeah. This is your favorite. This is my favorite. Not um, their best. No. I no. wonder what's next. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like this. Explain to me. So like, 
I don't like personally, I, I like, I love it so much, but I think if I was going to introduce someone to the wipers, I would show them a different album. Mm-hmm. And that's why I didn't give them, give this one best. That's funny. Cause that's the reason I gave this best is because I would, would do that. I, this is the one I would, sh- I would start with. I think, I think there are arguments to be made. I mm-hmm. mean, like I said, these initial albums are all amazing. Yeah. It's like picking your favorite kid right now. Yeah. So, and, uh, so one thing I will criticize is that and it, when I was re-listening to all these, I thought, yeah, this is not the best because of this. And that's uh, how unbalanced it feels because it starts out with, you know, no fair, which you were hearing, which is amazing. And then it goes to youth of America, which is 10 minutes long, 10 minutes. The only, I can only describe it as psychedelic punk. It's, it's never been done since. I don't, I don't feel like, not like that. It's one of the greatest guitar riffs ever absolutely. in my opinion absolutely like it's so catchy it like even though it's 10 minutes like they could have just played that guitar riff for 10 minutes and i wouldn't mind yeah yeah it's so beautiful it's i can't even describe it i i implore everyone to listen to the song you have America. it's 10 minutes you don't listen to the whole 10 minutes because it gets psychedelic but just listen to the first couple uh it's remarkable yeah, so it's it's, no? it's funny that song was a reaction to short punk songs. What was it ever? Although this album is still fairly short, it's still like thirty minutes long. Six so. songs though. Yeah, thirty minutes with six songs is, is interesting, and uh, so it starts out with those two songs, and then it, you know, before I go into that thought, I will mention on the box set they changed the order of the songs and this always bothered me because I was, it was, I never knew what was canon. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so on the, the, the version that's streaming, that's, that's everybody can find starts out with no fair. They follow it up with youth of America and then so on and so forth. It ends with, uh, when it's over the original version, I believe began with side B, which starts with, uh, Oh, that's right. Uh, Take uh taking too long or too long, I don't remember what it's called. And then it ends with Youth of America. Yeah. And yeah. I, I remember going back years ago and listening to it in that order, you know, the original order, the order that which it was intended, and it's inferior. Yeah, it's so inferior. The George Lucas special edition version is, is actually better. better. Yeah. So the version everyone can find <laughs> Who would have fucking thought? So the version everyone can find on streaming is ideally is is a better version. Uh so back to my original point, which is it starts out with no fair and then it goes to youth of America, this epic psychedelic thing. And then it ends with when it's over also equally impressive to me as youth of America. Mm-hmm. And then in the middle are these regular ass indie rock poppy songs that don't fit in at all. They're just regular ass songs. Nothing yeah. at all adventurous about them. No, but they still work. They're good. For, yeah. As like come down songs. Cause you just listen to like a 10 minute psych out. It's I, I get it in, in theory. And they're good songs, but it's so unbalanced. Like the 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 beginning songs and then the last song, they fucking dwarf the entire middle of the album. Uh, so the reason why I would recommend it is because it has everything that the band was good at. Everything, mm-hmm. all the, the the accessible poppy stuff like the first album, as well as the crazy psychedelic, uh, really interesting songwriting, long songs, jamming. Yeah, it has this album has everything, everything they're good at. It's just unbalanced and. Uh, that's why I, I I don't think it's my it's not my, it's not my favorite, mm-hmm. but I do think uh, it has so much of I, no fair alone. I think that can turn people. Oh yeah, I, I yeah. think that song it's can turn people. A beautiful song, absolutely beautiful. Um, so <coughs> my best, Alex's personal favorite. And now where are we at next? Now we're on 1983. Over the edge. <laughs> I'm already hard. <laughs> so good. One of the best riffs in my I've ever heard in my life. I love this riff so much. It's not the truth I see. It's just a that whale, man. His whale is so powerful. It's so fair, man. <laughs> it's so fair. Okay. 
So I wonder what we're going to say next, Alex. So this is my, the, what I think is the best album. And this is my personal favorite. We just (laughs) we swapped it out. (laughs) (laughs) And really, honestly, it could go either way. Like, um, depending on my mood, I could probably switch. Yeah. So Youth of America being my favorite, this one being the best. I just think this one's a little more accessible. Sure is. Um, I don't think we have any 10 minute long songs on here. Nope. There's no more psychedelic stuff, really. Um, Ever. Yeah, really. I, yeah. And I will say this is probably like the most mature angsty album. Yeah. That sounds like a double entendre. But like. It's angsty, but it doesn't get on my nerves like the way like a, a pop punk band. No, or it's very, emo band it's would. very authentic. It's very sincere. Yeah. And it's, and you listen to that production. Like I said earlier that every album gets worse sounding, uh, the drop off from the first album to youth of America, crazy. Like the, all of a sudden they sound like they're recording a garage. The drums are bad now. Mm-hmm. Um, the drums in the, even though these are our best and personal favorite albums, the drums on these albums are fucking horrible. It's mm-hmm. the most basic, like the one beat throughout the whole thing. Um, and, uh, but, but it's the, the way it's recorded. It's so, it's so, I hate using the word raw, I guess, but it's super, it doesn't sound at all like the same band from the first album. It doesn't sound like a, a, a regular punk band. This sounds like a dude who's dying. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. It's absolutely yeah, beautiful. There's the themes of being trapped and stuck in a city. Um, I'm going to play a little bit of doom town mm-hmm. because I think that's a good example of something that could have been like a stereotypical punk song. I mean, we, we've heard a million songs about, Oh, I'm trapped in the city, but I just think the way they execute Doomtown is so unique and mm-hmm. what makes them special. Like, it doesn't start off angry. No, no. Just hearing this again is making me remember like, the rest of the album and how good it is. Yeah. in that production though it's fucking it's, awful it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's so much more somehow but in my head it's amazing yeah yeah <laughs> great riff yeah but yeah that's just an example of uh they're giving you the angst with the music more than the lyrics. Yeah, absolutely. They, they're kind of like Mike, where lyrics are not the most important. Yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, this is a 83, and I know I'm pretty sure Greg Sage is gay. And during these, this time of history, pretty sure that wasn't exactly a, hey, let's all hang out and, and talk about our feelings kind of time. Like, hey... This is my lifestyle. Thank you for accepting me. That, that, that didn't happen back then. <laughs> Probably not in. Uh, I know people think Portland's a wonderful progressive city. Oh, now, I've heard otherwise. But not, yeah. not back in the day. Y- yeah, yeah. Uh, things are progressive because of a backlash. Because things were not always <laughs> progressive. Uh, this is back in the time where it was fucking dangerous. And uh, you, man, and hearing his wail is like, man, I hear, I feel some pain, man. <laughs> I feel some pain coming from this guy. It's it, like I said, it's, it's very authentic sounding. You know what other song I like a lot? I hope he's actually gay and I didn't just make that up. I'm going to Google it. Yeah, you better Google that. Well, <laughs> Imagine Mike, I just fabricated that entire thing. Well, uh, Mike is spitting slander. I'm going to play some Romeo for you guys because I think that's one of the best Swipers tracks ever. So here's Romeo. Hell yeah. <laughs> hilarious yeah this is like the opposite of doom town this is like high energy yeah this is um this is the most motorcycle song ever written yeah it's still motorcycle yeah fuck born to be wild yeah fuck that i'm gonna listen to some romeo hell yeah oh that's Uh, a great song yeah uh i don't know if greg sage is gay or not (laughs) I was Googling and basically the consensus is like, hey, it, it went around that he was gay, but you don't, we don't know. It might not be true. Yeah. He's like, like we said earlier, or like you said earlier, uh, 
hard to find facts about this band. Yes. People did not give them a lot of attention. Yes. Uh, fucking tragedy, dude. Jesus Christ. So, you know, apologies if we get anything wrong. Yeah. But, if uh, you're, if he's not gay, whoops. But also if he is, uh, check back to my earlier point about how his songs sound fucking painful and how life was probably hard. I don't know what I'm talking about, dude. Uh, all I know is that I like this band. <laughs> Another real, real angry song. Um, what the fuck? Which one are you talking about, Alex? Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Super angry. Yeah. Very angry. I actually find that to be one of the weaker tracks. That along with... Um, actually, the one of the main reasons I didn't give this best is because ending the song... I mean, ending the album with this time is absurd that's like the only bad song it's so boring and generic and it it doesn't need to be in the album it would be fucking almost perfect if that that song wasn't on there i feel like they do like sequels to songs but they don't call them sequels like obviously no one wants an alien oh right alien boy no yeah also that song is fucking pretty as hell it's real good yeah i think all the songs are they're all so damn good uh Oh man, it's so young is probably one of my favorite tracks of theirs ever. Um uh, I don't I don't know. Uh, I, it's stylistically it's it is similar to Youth of America, but no psychedelic stuff. There's no crazy six, ten minute songs. Um and, and way personally more, I love that shit, but that's why I gave it personally. That's what yeah, I'm, yeah. I was actually yeah, li- when I was listening to it, I was like, obviously Youth of America is Alex's best because he's a psychedelic motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, I'm very surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised because this that, one, it's it's that's for, what that's why we have best and personal favorite though. The if if I can separate the two, I tr- I try right, to right yeah. Um, because there is a difference. There's a difference between what I think everyone will enjoy and what I personally enjoy. Uh, and obviously, you feel the same. Uh, the fantastic fucking album. I absolutely adore it. I man, this one is so much more normal, and I think people would probably like it more. Uh, than Youth of America if you're just not a music head. I don't know yeah, what to yeah. call you. Normal people. A, no, a normal head. Uh, but musicians would love Youth of Probably. Probably. Uh, but still, uh, it has the one mode. The mm-hmm. the, the dark uh, kind of the dark regular punk songs essentially. I don't know how else to describe it. That's a very fucking... That was a bad description. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Good fucking album. Though. Just listen to it. All right. Uh, next album. <clears throat> we are on to uh, 1986 mm. Land of the Lost. And I don't think this album's on Spotify. But not on Spotify? Yeah. And it's actually out of print. So I'm glad that it's streaming. That's so crazy. It's on Apple Music. So I guess Spotify users are out of luck. That's bizarre That voice. You fade away so fast. I know I saw you. Okay, okay. Let's get into it. I thought this album was if I'm judging a book by a cover, which obviously I shouldn't do. Right. No one should do. Because I thought this album was gonna suck. Ah. Really good. Pretty good. I dig yeah. it. I dig it. Uh obviously it is not the caliber of the past couple it's not a classic no the past couple were so extraordinary that obviously this one it's this to me uh remind it's like it's like their version to me of south of heaven from slayer which is a, a good album oh but, i i but, feel like we're gonna I, oh we're gonna find about you know they s- I keep peeking in my ear spoiler alert when we do slayer we're do, we're gonna fight over south of heaven oh <laughs> my point was that i adored rain and blood so much that no matter wh- how good it was yeah, afterward, like nothing, was- it couldn't compare. And that's how this, al- that's how this album is to me. <clears throat> Still pretty decent. It's not revolutionary. There's no crazy. Like, like we said briefly, the, the psychedelic aspects are, are gone forever for this band. No more. Will they go to psychedelic? I don't know about forever. Well, 
I'm curious because I have I don't remember a single time it happening again. Yeah. <laughs> but it's dark. It's uh I don't know, it's less spacey too. The songs are oh, just way more. less I love Fairweather Friend. It's like a motorhead. It's like wipers covering motorhead. Wait, which one's that? All right, I guess I'm playing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's just Motorhead. Yeah, that is absolutely Motorhead. Motorhead. <laughs> I usually do a better Lemmy. I'll have to work on that. My voice is kind of flat. Okay. Uh, I I think the title track is like a much worse, slower Romeo. Yeah, it's, it's trying to go. Hmm? It's not amazing, especially because it's between Fairweather Friend and Nothing Left to Lose, which is real good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that the closing track, Just Say, that's one of the few songs I think a- is it as good as like the earlier stuff Okay, uh, on the whole album and uh, many after it. I think it's a uh, pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, I think that's how I feel about Nothing Left to Lose. Like you could slip that in and yeah. people wouldn't think it was like from a different album. Yeah. Yeah. And this is uh, like three years after the last one. Yeah. There was the quite a gap. Yes. For how relentlessly bands recorded and toured back in the day. This is quite the gap. Yeah, like, it, I mean, it's only three years, but for context, like, 83 was, like, not the peak, but, like, a little bit after the peak of the hardcore era, and then 86, it was completely dead. Okay. Completely gone. So, like, within that time, a lot has changed. Do you think the album title is a reference to that? Yeah, maybe, maybe. It's yeah, could, like potentially. Dinosaurs, <laughs> Land of the Law. Yeah. That's because they didn't exactly fit in before. I can imagine after. Like, there's yeah. no punk scene. Yeah, what the, the fuck do you do now? The title's kind of app, if that's the. We're just insinuating. We're this. Yeah. Yes. Because we, we don't fucking know because apparently no one knows because <laughs> there's no fucking documentation of this band. Uh, but it's decent. Uh, I'm not itching to go back to it, though, the way I do with the others. And I think that's a fair consensus. Uh, but it, I mean, it's just what comes when there's, you start out so goddamn strong. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think they'll, they'll get their voice back later albums to a point. And let's move on to the next. This is following year, 1987, follow blind. <laughs> More flange on the drums. Oh, Jesus Christ. All the flange. It's probably because the drums are so fucking bad. <laughs> they don't get better for a long time. Oh, they sound awful. There's some uh, flange effects on there. So it sounds like, uh, like, a, like a spaceman who's bad at drumming. Yeah, I hope nobody notices. Wow, what happened to your voice, Mr. Sage? Okay, all right. Well, th- huh? so I think this album goes back to being a little, little moodier. It's pretty again. moody. This was uh, the first Wipers album that I didn't like. I like it. You like it? Oh, man. It's like equal to Land. Of, maybe I'd give this the slight edge. Of really, Land of the Lost. Really, yep. why? Please explain, because <laughs> I I found this to be quite forgettable. I think uh, just like thematically, it feels like a more logical continuation of what they're doing. Um, Losers Town again. I. Where I'm like, oh, they kind of do sequels. I feel like that's like a sequel to uh, to Doomtown, mm. subject wise. But there's some like rockabilly like stuff mm-hmm. in there. They do dabble. Um, anytime you find, I like the weird effects in the beginning of the song. You know, he Greg it, sounds a lot like Iggy Pop on that song. It's uh, I wrote that it sounds like The Cure mixed with Jimi Hendrix somehow. 
Put on a little bit of that. That's a strange comparison. Yeah, I don't know if we'll get the full, but that's kind of what I thought of personally. So it's kind of like the here the cure for sure. Yeah, that that's a cool ass effect. Yeah, it's real cool. Yeah. That's just such a great song. Yeah. Whenever I'm alone with you. That's <laughs> your Robert Smith. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. All right. Uh, so yeah, I didn't get to the <clears throat> Hendrix guitar solos in there, but it goes into um. God damn it! The chill remains, which sounds like a Hendrix punk song, which I knew. I know for sure Sage loved Hendrix. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm, mm. So it really comes out on this album. And yeah, this, those two songs alone, I think I like really infinitely more than anything on Land of the Lost. Crazy. I, I dug the first three tracks and then after that, I lost it and I couldn't, I couldn't get into any, any song after that. No, not even Losers Town. Uh, wait, which one? I know you, we just talked about it, but I don't remember it off the bat. Okay, I'm going to play it because this this is kind of a whirlwind listening to this band because the albums are short, so you can like take them in and then you're like, what just just happened? So I'm going to play that for Mm. Mike and the audience. All right. That riff is very reminiscent of some of the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember it. Uh, it's not that it's uh, bad or at all. It's just it just uh, didn't do anything for you. Yeah, it's like the the decent songs are fine, but within the context of a bunch of boring stuff, they just you lose it. It just it just blends right in mm-hmm. uh, because nothing is remarkable to me. Okay, <laughs> so I, I, this one is it the first one to to truly bore me. And it would not be the last. Sorry. <laughs> Even though I disagree, I think that's I think that's fair. It's very tame uh, disagreements today. Yeah, very tame. Very, we're both tired. We both got a cough. <laughs> uh, so let's move on to the next. Where are we now? Now we are in 1988. The Circle. <laughs> This already sounds like a reused riff. Not the best opener. Uh, no, no. Not the best opener. Not the best opener. However, I didn't hate this album. I gave it worse though. Whoa! 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 Hold, <laughs> on, hold on. I need a fucking moment here. Okay, I didn't think, I did not, I honestly didn't think we were going to fight. I did not believe it. How? It just it just sounds like they're spinning their wheels on this album. On this one, huh? On this one. This is the this one they feel like that. This is the one they're spinning their wheels on. Oh, okay. Yeah, go on. Seems, this seems kind of stagnant to me. Although saying that, I do like all the same in True Believer. Those are good songs to me. Okay. Okay. And then the rest of the album, I do not care for. Uh, so I will give you that it's nothing, nothing remarkable, but I, my argument is that nothing's been remarkable since over the edge and this, uh, I liked it more than the last one. I thought, you know, some of these songs are bad. They're, obviously they're not all winners, mm-hmm. not all winners. I didn't note that. Uh, what is this? Good thing is fucking awful. Um, only a couple actually bad songs. The rest are fine. And I guess I, I bet if I went back and listened to it, I'd find something to hate about it. Sure. Because I'm at, I'm at that point of fatigue of this, <laughs> of this fucking band. So it's fine. It is fine. 
I it has a lot of ballads. I dig it. I like how they're going darker. They're going a lot darker. Mm-hmm. Um, ever, ever since the ever since Over the Edge, I felt like the the more rock rocking songs or the popular stuff has not been landing. Mm-hmm. So I was I'm very I was welcome to the the, the edgier, darker stuff, the more ballady stuff. So this was like okay. The last album had very little of it. This one has a lot of it. I'm in. I'm in. I just, for now. Yeah, I don't think it's bad. Bad like. I wouldn't put it on like the worst albums ever. It's this worst of the bunch. Yep. Worst of the wipers album. Also, another thing about Greg is I have been gushing about his whale. His whale is, has been neutered. Mm -hmm. uh, As you heard, it's almost like a different singer from like follow the blind. Yeah. Follow blind. Um, Actually, you can kind of separate all these albums into, to eras. So the first three, you know, 80 to 83. And then, this era would be Land of the Lost to this one, which is 86 to, to 88. Mm-hmm. And then there's another one more last era from 93 to 99. And they each have different, a different sound, but through each era, his voice has gotten wimpier and weaker and more reverb has been put all over everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is, at, especially this album is where they start to really show, um, Show show their edge, and uh, I miss his voice. I miss the whale. I miss the yeah. passion. There's no more shouting. It's just, uh, and then eventually, even that would go. It would just be regular ass singing pretty mm-hmm. soon. Like I said, we're not getting any any more insanely cool, memorable no. riffs anymore. And that's uh, devastating. Because how it, it makes me it really makes how do me, you write Youth of America yeah, and like it makes me it really makes me wonder like because I hear all these riffs and I I eventually forget that I'm listening to it and then I have to I stop have that myself same thing like yeah yeah I have to stop myself and then like you know what I'm gonna go back I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking sit down do nothing listen to the songs and when as soon as I start paying attention I am greeted with a mediocre riff that mm. I feel like anybody could have written and I thought like but he wrote countless amazing riffs how was how does this happen mm-hmm. you don't just i mean i don't want to reference back to train spotting and how <laughs> sick boy said first you have it then you lose it in all walks of life but how do you lose it do you just fucking stop listening or do you stop caring or is because, it because it's not s- sustainable maybe there's you're not making money off of it or because I, yeah, I, don't, I don't believe that you lose talent i don't believe because regardless of all of history, proved me wrong immediately with all the the bad things that have that good artists have put out. I believe they're circumstantial. I don't think you could like if someone's funny, you don't stop being funny in life just because you get older. Usually perspectives change, uh, shit happens, and then maybe you don't want to joke as much, and then therefore you're less funny. It's not that you just lose funny. Sure. So why would you lose? the ability to hear something interesting and then put it out. If you, if you've already had that ability, how did that happen? I don't know. Someone should ask Metallica. how that happens. <laughs> this is, and you know what? I did like death magnetic. I thought it was a pretty solid. Uh, did not care for hardwired. Hardwired. Destruction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Self, tell her where to self destruct. That's what, the real self indulgent 80 minute. Real long. Oh my goodness. I wonder if they'll ever break up so we can talk about Metallica. That'd be a fun one. We'll slowly, uh, like, uh, we'll slowly kill Lars Ulrich, and then I was gonna say we'll slowly slip in album reviews <laughs> in each podcast, <laughs> yeah. and then that way a hardcore fan can go and edit them into one podcast. Yeah, well, it's like those things where you put the the a secret message uh, with the first letter of every sentence, <laughs> <laughs> except way stupider, <laughs> way stupider, especially because I told you. Whoa. Exactly, uh, I think it's a, a it's a decent album, Alex. This is your worst. Holy shit! Yeah, holy shit. Well, let's uh, let's move on to 1993, the beginning of what I decided is the third era. Uh, this is Silver Sail. <laughs> scared to say it because obviously you got some fire coming i love this song all right all right this song is not bad it's got those uh those acoustic guitars it's kind of like a western a little bit yeah a spacey western Mm. see 
like that's sorry. That's cool guitar playing. It's interesting, yeah. He's a good that's guitar player. That's real cool, but it's not. Doesn't have like the weight of um, yeah. Youth of America. No weight whatsoever. This thing is uh, very, very light. All right, let's talk about it a little bit. So, uh, this is the one that broke me. Okay, <laughs> and this is my worst and least favorite. See, this is the one that got me back in the game. Holy shit! Why? Why? Because it's how. As you can, if you're watching on YouTube, as you can tell by the album cover, it, it like the album cover, it tells you this is like a spacey album, and I, this kind of like, it's fun to uh, light a candle and just <laughs> sit in bed and listen to this album. What kind of candle we got lit today, Alex? What do we got? <laughs> This got is the Candle Light Company. Light is spelled L I T E. Of course. So shout out to you guys. We got the evening fireside glow going. It's fucking lovely. This is a great candle. Uh, we're doing it every episode now. Got, do- <laughs> got it at Rite Aid, two for one sale. So also shout out nice. to Rite Aid, two for one candle sale. Um, yeah, it's this. It's real, real comforting, like a like a blanket to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think standing there is a real sludgy sludge metal song. Uh, I don't remember. Hey, I think I actually liked that one a little bit. So I'm going to play that. And then it's so weird because it's a real spacey album, but the title track has like a lot of energy. Fuck that song. Sorry. Hey, Hey, <laughs> y'all don't say that. Okay. So we're going to play standing there. Cause we both enjoy that. Yeah, it's sludge without the distortion. Yeah, like the Melvins could also cover this song yeah. and have it be awesome. So yeah, I made my point about the, uh, yeah. the sludge. Uh, there's a lot of instrumentation on this one. You could hear all the acoustic guitars in there, which has never been there before. Um, very clean sounding. Still a lot of a lot of reverb. It's only getting heavier with the reverb, which is fine. It works for the edginess and the darkness of all all of it. But there's, I was actually surprised to hear like not a single acoustic solo kind of thing. It's all just no. they're in the background of just the standard wipers formula, mm-hmm. and every song is the same song. It's just all edgy, all minor key, all dark. Uh, I couldn't tell you a single fucking riff if I tried. It's the uh, it's it's wipers dope smoker. Just view it as one long song. Sorry, I love doing a dope smoker impression. <laughs> that is sleep for anybody who is very confused. I just started screaming, and you'll be even more confused when you throw on dope smoker in eighty minute <laughs> song about hash hash hashins. Hashins. Hashin. Hashin. An what? intergalactic pot fuel. Oh, something that makes sense. I, for a second, I thought you were talking gibberish, but now I'm very, I'm on oh, board. No, no, no. That doesn't make any sense. All no right. Sense we're, we're, we're detracting. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it it works as a, this nice little package of, uh, of spaciness. So this, it isn't like... Like it, it jumps out as being awful, except for like a prisoner. I think that that's what pisses me off. But <laughs> for the most part, it's just it would, be, it would sound fine in the background. It's not like bad, not not really bad. But in the context of what the wipers, I know they can be. It's really depressing. Oh, no. Like you said, this is a new era. And it's got nothing that I can remember. I listened to this album like three or four times. I couldn't tell you. You can what make, I listen to. You can make love to this album. I'd hope you'd be focused on other things while while this <laughs> while that, the love making is uh, commenced. That's why, dog. You know, <laughs> uh, but just you, enough. I will just back, enough for you, background noise. You did make a good point with the dope smoker reference. Obviously, well, not obviously, but like oddly, because it does sound like one long song. And it's shorter than Dope Smoker. It's only like 40 minutes. Well, it's fucking a full <laughs> album. It's full, not just one song. <laughs> but but the, this is also, I think, uh, Greg's weakest vocal performance, this whole album. 
He does not not one ounce of attempted whale. I wonder if that's why it's so spacey. Like if we just give you like texture, mm-hmm. you won't care about the vocals. Texture wise, I think it's uh, it's actually pretty cool. I like the cleanness of it. I like the 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 spaciness. Oh, it's not too spacey actually. I I I never I didn't feel that coming from it. Maybe it's just because album cover maybe is spacey. So maybe. I I did what they told me. I associated. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Uh, where are we at? What's next? Now we're on to 1996, The Herd. Also, I'll wait till the song's out. Even more reverb. Even yep. more reverb than I thought was possible. They just like they just threw it up a few notches with every album. Every album. Yeah, they're kind of more my bloody Valentine than, but without the insane noise and the awesomeness. <laughs> I'm a fan of my bloody Valentine. Not a huge fan because I never did do a deep dive, but I do appreciate. It. Okay. Let's talk about it. Sorry, I got my my verbiage messed up. So, S- Silver Sail is is dreamy. That's this is more spacey. Okay. So, and there is a difference between the two. I think spacey I equate with um with like more trippiness. Where dreamy is more like relaxing. Okay, so last album, Dreamy, this one, Spacey. Yes. I'll agree with that one. Okay. Because I didn't hear yeah. the spaciness in the last one. No, this one, as you can see, again, with the space album cover. So uh, uh, this one uh, might as well be the last album to me. I, this was my worst <laughs> for a while. And then I finished the discography. And then even though, because like I, I do the notes as I listen to the albums, and I usually have a conclusion by the second listener or however many times I listen to it. And then by the end of the discography, I still had not come to a conclusion of what my best or worst was. And I had to go back and like, what the fuck do I feel about this? Yeah. And this was my worst for, for a while. And then I went back to silver sale and I thought, no, no, I hate this. Like, (laughs) hold on, hold on. Let me listen to this one again. Maybe I'll hate it again. And I realized whichever one I listened to last, that's the one you're going to hate. But the reason I gave worst to silver sale Instead of this one is because that one broke me. That's the first one. I I liked the only I liked one guitar line in that whole album. Mm-hmm. This one, it is just the same fucking thing, but his whale is a little bit back. And that was enough for me to be like, okay, all right, good enough. I disagree. I, okay, why? I think what do I like on this? Uh sinking as a stone is a real wacky guitar solo on that song. Just all over the place. I'm gonna play a bit. Hit it. I'm just gonna fast forward a little, so maybe. Still gonna fast forward. See, a little bit of the whale. It's not crazy, but it's good. I can recognize him now. I know it's him now. I need to get better with timestamps. That's my New Year's resolution. Okay, okay. Damn it. You're torturing our listeners with this garbage. Yes. <laughs> I would love if this is not even a song. You just, you just got to mix that. Oh, okay. Is it? Uh, it's part of it. I think he has a few solos, but... I think this part's just... This is pretty standard, yeah. Real nice, and even though it's standard. Uh, nothing nothing to write home about. No. But, uh... It's, it's, it's not bad. It's pleasant. It's all pleasant. And, like, again, it's like the last one where I can't say it fucking sucks. It doesn't suck, but it, nothing about it grabs me. I like Defiant, too. Yeah, I don't remember that one. <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> Sorry. Just a quickie. Yeah. 
This kind of sounds like old wipers. A little, a little bit, bit, a little bit. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, I think. Uh, so it's not okay, because like I said, I was jumping back and forth, like whichever I don't know which one is the fucking worst. I know I didn't like it, but it's not that this album is to me. It's not that it's better than the last album. It's just not worse. Okay. Yeah. It, I listen to them back to back, and they kind of f- feel like a continuation. Yeah, they feel like the same album to me. They feel exactly the same. And if it was one big album, I would feel the same. I would feel You'd exactly hate, the probably same. Probably hate it even I, more if because it, it's more to listen to. Absolutely, you know me very well. I would give it worst. <laughs> I'll give it worst and least favorite because it would be the longest. It's definitely not the wipers of old, but I still think these two albums are real enjoyable. If you know you're getting something different, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Uh, okay uh where are we are we're at the end of our journey we uh it's been uh fun so last album 1999 power in one <laughs> I think you said it when we were listening to it earlier. Just uh-huh. like a stooge. Huh? Just like the stooges, the song. No, I didn't say that. I think it's kind of like a stooge. It is. Oh, okay. Let's dive in. What did you think? I, sorry, I almost gave this, or it was between this. Really? Really? uh, Yeah, but. We do not agree. Yeah. I like this one a little bit more, a little bit more. I don't know. There's this, I don't know, nothing really uh, stuck with me. I feel like it's a recurring sentence that we've been <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. the past the, the, six albums. The, those are uh, a hazard while listening to the wipers, I guess. Um, I do like the song rest of my life. Hmm. I do like shaken. I think those two songs are real good, but outside of that, I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, what stuck out to you? I kind of liked, uh, what is it called? Too many strangers. The closing track. I thought it was pretty. I that was all right. But uh, again, nothing that grabbed me. Nothing that stood out. Except that a few more interesting things in the last couple albums, uh, like in um, "Losers' Revenge." It's like the first song in six albums where Greg's doing. He's back to the spoken word thing. Mm-hmm. Where he's getting real low to the mic like this, and then it gets louder and louder. I, and I love that. And he's not done it for many albums. Well, that's a very Wipers song name too, Losers Revenge. It is absolutely a Wipers song name. Yeah. And uh, it's like kind of reminiscent of the early stuff, but like a little bit like Take It Now, I think is interesting. I don't like it really as a song, but I think it's interesting. Uh, misleading the song is uh, terrible. Misleading is terrible. I don't know. It was really hard to fucking pay attention to. Uh, yeah, same here. It was, an, it was yet a, another situation where I'm listening to it and then I have to like stop what I'm doing and like pay undivided attention to the riff that is being played played and then i'm just like okay i could have just not done that and i would feel the same uh obviously give this the slight nod over the circle i like this more than the last two albums not as much as the circle i I disagree man uh, i just oh (laughs) this was so difficult for me yeah this it's always funny when the the hard quote unquote hard parts of this podcast come up, which is it's not necessarily listening to a bad album. It's because you listen to a bad album, you know it's bad and you don't like it, and then you have an opinion on it. This is not necessarily bad. It just doesn't grab you, 
And if you say it sucks, then that's being unfair as fuck because it doesn't suck. It's just, I don't want to listen to it again. And it's for me, formulating an actual uh, thoughtful opinion on it is oddly enough, the most difficult thing. I always, I always say that about movies now, because now um, you get like so bad. It's good. Mm -hmm. The worst thing a movie can do now is be boring. Mm -hmm. And I guess music's the same way. I disagree. I think if a song pisses me off, which they do, they tend to do, then I, then that's the, <laughs> as, as bad as you could be. Uh, but, yeah. Music and movies are two different mediums though. So, but it's, it's a similar situation where it's like, it's hard to find words. Like how much can you say about something that's, eh. uh, I don't want to compare it too much because that'd be highly, highly insulting, but it reminds me of that whole middle section of Devo's discography. <laughs> Episode three, Ooh, please check that, that one out. That was rough. So that was real rough. It's real rough. It's real bad. And this is not even close to being as bad as that. Not even close. No, the, the, their two albums <laughs> are way better than those Devo albums. For sure. For sure. But it did spark the same kind of thing in me where I don't, I'll never remember a song after I'm done listening to this. Mm hmm. So what do I say about it? What can I possibly say about it? I guess, uh, you know, you mumble about it in a microphone and hope it's good enough for people. <laughs> Is that what you do here, Alex? Is that what you do? That's what I do one to two hours, depending on the artist. <laughs> but it, it also just solidifies my, my everyone's opinion pretty much is that the first three albums are so fucking good. Oh, first so three albums are first good. two EPs. And yeah, I would even say if you, you know, if you like some shoegaze, I think, you know, the Herd and Silver Sale are worth checking out. I disagree. I disagree completely. I think, they're, I think you should. I, I think if you like shoegaze. If, if you found anything that we played even remotely, remotely interesting, then sure. But I think the, the bits that we've, we played are the clearest representation of those albums. You're not missing anything uh, that that we did not play. Uh, is that some hidden track that's some, somehow this mind-blowing fucking thing? Or maybe there is. Or maybe you're a liar. God damn it, Alex. I always, you know, what's funny is uh, when we started this, I'm like, I'm going to, we're going to go to the record store and I'm going to buy some like obnoxious albums in your presence. I still haven't done that. <laughs> when I get back, we're doing that. Just film me just fucking yelling shaking at strangers, your, shaking your head or disapproval. Yeah. Or I'm going to give Mike my stack of records and make him check out with it. So he has to oh, do the feel the shame. Yeah. Embarrassment. Oh no, yeah. my image. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that, that was our very, thorough overview of the wipers uh still believe they're underrated still believe they didn't get enough attention and that people don't talk about them nearly enough please give them a shot they're fucking cool they're fucking very cool except for all this shit that i talked at the end anyway recap alex personal favorite youth of america best album over the edge worst album the circle so very similar response from me, Youth of America, 1981, best, Over the Edge, 1983, personal favorite, and Silver Sail, 1993, worst, least best favorite. Album. Oh, how <laughs> fucking dare you? <laughs> fucking slanderous bastard. Anyway, Whoa. thank you so much for listening and watching. Uh, if you have any comments, suggestions for other artists, other feedback and all that shit that I might not respond to. We'll see. <laughs> Send everything you want to every album ever at gmail.com. And of course, please share with a buddy, with someone you don't like, or like and subscribe and leave a review and a comment and all the fucking things that would help us out a lot because we love he people hearing. I don't know what I'm, where I'm going. Whatever. Just please help us out. You know, you know what to do. <laughs> uh, and of course, after this episode, please be sure to check out the Wipers playlist on Spotify or in the description of wherever you're listening, everyalbumever.com. There are links all over the place, links all over the place, as well as from pre previous episodes. So go ahead and check those out too. Ugh. Also, Instagram, check me out at Pope Jesse Ventura and Alex at Mother Puncture. We do... Uh, Many things. We post lots of things. I like to post funny things that I think are funnies. 
sometimes I'll post my record collection mm-hmm. and sometimes I don't. I'll just yeah. go in a drought. Yeah. yeah. I post a lot of uh, music bullshit, me playing music or clips from the show or a lot of it's license plates, really. <laughs> Stupid license plates that I encounter in the world. Uh, also license plates that people send me that are silly and I make comments about them. Uh, you know, like to have fun. Yeah, you know? I saw so many today, but I know you have an excess. I have, yeah, hundreds of of vanity plates that people have sent me. I got a three for one today that was so like all three in a row that was so tempting. Really? But I'm like, no, he's <laughs> he's overwhelmed. Yeah, I'm a little overwhelmed. I had yeah. to like put time aside because this is so not involved with music. But like with those license plates, <laughs> fuck, dude. Like, I love doing them, but the thing is, every time I post one, I have to think of a joke, and I'm not a fucking comedian or joke writer, so it's like, fuck, man, like, it's really, hard. not hard, but I gotta be funny, <laughs> it's yeah, hard, yeah. and I, I like to think that they're pretty, uh, a little tickling, I like to think they're pretty, they're okay, but <clears throat> I would love to pick the closing track if you're okay oh, with that. No, I feel like I've had the last two, and I think you were uh, more passionate about the or yeah, for longer in your life. Yeah, uh, I was looking forward to this quite a bit. Although in the end, I think I came out the bigger. I yeah, bigger fan. You came out. That's funny. The, I, this was literally one of the two bands that I wanted to cover before even starting this podcast, and then you came out liking them more than I did. Yeah, I like more Wiper albums than you do. Uh, so, uh, well, I'm gonna go way back. I'm gonna go way back early in the band's history, and uh, I want to put on a wait a minute from. Is this real? First album. Okay. So thank you all for listening and watching. See ya.